السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو ویٹ لک ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا اینیٹمی آف بوائنس ہرٹ ہرٹ از اے مسکولر فور چیمبرڈ آرگن دیٹ ڈرائیو دا سرکولیٹری سسٹم اٹ ہیز اسپیسیفک ان پٹ چینلز وچ آر کالڈ وینس اینڈ اسپیسیفک آؤٹ پٹ چینلز وچ آر کالڈ آرٹریز ہرٹ از پروٹیکٹڈ بائی پیریکارڈیم اینڈ پیریکارڈیم فردر کنٹینس ٹو لیئرس The outer layer of pericardium is called fibrous pericardium while the inner layer of pericardium is called serous pericardium. Fibrous pericardium has many fibers uh, and the serous pericardium is the uh, layer of the pericardium that covers the heart. Now serous pericardium further contains two layers. So the layer of the serous pericardium that covers the sac means that covers the pericardium uh, from inside is called parietal serosa and the layer of the serous pericardium that covers the heart is called visceral serosa or epicardium. The pericardium originates from the base of the heart from the arteries of the heart uh, and then it covers whole the whole heart, whole heart. so the pericardium forms a sac around the heart uh, and this uh, pericardial sac uh, encloses a fluid called pericardial fluid now let's talk about the parts of the heart there are two surfaces of the heart two borders of the heart a base of the heart and an apex the base of the heart is the uh, broader part of the heart or broader top of the heart uh, which receives the hilus of the heart and is uh, oriented dorso cranially so the base of the heart receives great veins and it sends out great arteries and therefore it receives the hilus of the heart similarly opposite to the base of the heart is the apex of the heart and apex is completely formed by the left ventricle of the heart and the position of the apex is uh, that it is present cordoventral cordoventrally now let's talk about the surfaces of the heart there are two surf- surfaces of the heart uh, one is the left surface which is called auricular surface and the other surface is right a uh, right surface which is called atrial surface on the left side of the heart auricles can be seen with with the pulmonary trunk in between them and therefore left side of the heart is called auricular surface similarly on the right side of the heart uh, both cranial and caudal vena cava can be seen entering into the right atrium and therefore this right side of the heart is called atrial surface because of the presence of uh, vena cava entering the right atrium right and left atrium are clearly visible on the right side of the heart uh, while uh, right and left auricles are clearly visible on the left side of heart now let's talk about the borders of the heart so the heart has two borders and these are cranial border and caudal border cranial border is completely formed by the right ventricle while caudal border is formed by left ventricle now let's move to the chambers of the heart heart has four chambers one is the right atrium uh, right ventricle left atrium and left ventricle the ventricles of the heart are not present on the right or left side of the heart uh, but the right ventricle faces cranially and similarly the left ventricle faces caudally so the right ventricle is not on the right side of the heart or, but it is on the uh, it faces cranially and similarly left ventricle faces caudally and it is not on the left side of the heart left atrium is the chamber of the heart into which the pulmonary veins empty so the left atrium receives oxygenated blood from lungs uh, and this bl- uh, blood enters the left atrium through pulmonary veins on the other hand right atrium receives blood from whole of the body uh, through uh, cranial and caudal vena cava which enter it and these cranial and caudal vena cava uh, receive the blood from whole body from the uh, legs abdomen thorax and neck and head uh, and they finally pour the blood into the right atrium through the uh, through this vena cava right ventricle is the chamber of the heart which pumps the blood Uh, via pulmonary trunk to the lungs in order to oxygenate the blood so it pumps the deoxygenated blood to both lungs and the right ventricle makes up most of the heart on the right side below the coronary groove i shall discuss coronary groove later in this uh, in this lecture on the other hand the left ventricle uh, pumps the oxygenated blood to whole body 
and the left ventricle forms the caudal boundary of the heart and its apex so the apex of the heart is completely formed by left ventricle there are two auricles present in the heart and these are right auricle and left auricle and these both auricles can be clear can be clearly seen from the left side of the heart so the right auricle is present cranially to the pulmonary trunk and the left auricle is present caudal to the pulmonary trunk actually the uh, auricular cordis or auricles are extensions from atrium so the left auricular cordis is the extension of left atrium and right auricular cordis is the extension of right atrium now let's talk about the grooves which are present in the heart so at the level between the right and left ventricle a groove is present which is called interventricular groove and this interventricular groove is present both on the left side of the heart and right side of the heart this interventricular groove actually marks the interventricular septum so the groove which is present on the right side of the heart is called right interventricular groove or subsynostal interventricular groove the groove which is present on the left surface of the heart or auricular face of the heart is called left interventricular groove or paraconal interventricular groove this paraconal interventricular groove contains one artery and one vein and it is called paraconal interventricular artery the subsynostal interventricular groove also contains subsynostal interventricular artery uh, and this artery gives branches to the ventricles in order to supply them with blood a difference between the paraconal interventricular groove and subsynostal interventricular groove is uh, that the paraconal interventricular groove does not reach the apex but the subsynostal interventricular groove reaches the apex of the heart there is another groove which is present in the heart and it is called coronary groove uh, and this coronary groove is an external separation of both atria and both ventricles and it contains the coronary vessels inside the uh, inside the coronary groove is uh, there are left and right coronary arteries so we can say that coronary groove is present in the base of the heart and it is an external separation or clear cut separation of both atria with from both ventricles there is a groove which is present on the caudal border of the heart and this groove is called intermediate groove now let's talk about the vessels of the heart on the auricular face of the heart there is a pulmonary trunk which carries the blood from right ventricle to the lungs and this blood is deoxygenated so pulmonary trunk carries the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs in order to oxygenate it and this pulmonary trunk uh, gives two branches or two arteries which are called left and right pulmonary arteries left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery uh, so the left pulmonary artery carries the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the left lung and right pulmonary artery carries the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the right lung there is another structure which is present in the pulmonary trunk and that structure is sonus sonus is the expanded outflow from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk the vessel which originates from the left ventricle is called aorta and it comes from the left ventricle and carries the oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to the body this aorta forms the aortic arch uh, which moves caudally inside the thoracic cavity and it forms thoracic aorta then it moves from the diaphragm to the abdomen and then in abdomen it forms abdominal aorta this aorta also supplies blood to the head and neck portions of the body the other vessel which is present in the heart is brachiocephalic trunk which is present cranially between the pulmonary trunk and aorta uh, there extends a ligament which is called botalis ligament or ligamentum arteriosum actually before birth Uh, this botalis ligament or ligamentum arteriosum uh, is like a duct which is called botalis duct and the function of this botalic uh, botalis duct in the fetus uh, is to transport blood from the uh, pulmonary trunk uh, to aorta directly uh, because before birth lungs are not functional and therefore this botalis ligament transports blood from the pulmonary trunk to aorta directly and after the birth this botalis duct uh, is uh, uh, changes into botalis ligament or ligamentum arteriosum
right atrium also uh, needs oxygenated blood which is provided by heart itself so the right atrium receives blood from the heart itself uh, through coronary sinus uh, and this coronary sinus collects venous blood from the heart and then pours this blood to the right atrium so this vessel is called coronary sinus on the atrial face of the heart there are two vessels which are called cranial vena cava and caudal vena cava and these two veins uh, come from the neck and head region of the body and also from the uh, and they also collect blood from the legs ab uh, lower abdomen and thoracic regions of the uh, body and then pour this blood into the right atrium between these cranial and caudal vena cava uh, inside the right atrium there is a tissue which is called intervenous tubercle and this intervenous tubercle is organized in such a way uh, that the blood coming from the cranial and caudal vena cava is directed directly into the right atrium so this intervenous tubercle is present in the right atrium between the cranial and caudal vena cava so that blood can be directed into the right atrium now before discussing the internal structures of the heart you should know the pathway of blood flow in the heart so both the cranial and caudal vena cava pour the deoxygenated blood uh, into the right atrium and blood from the right atrium flows towards the right ventricle through atrioventricular valve then this right ventricle pumps this blood to the right and left lungs by pulmonary trunk after oxygenation in the lungs the oxygenated blood is brought uh, brought about uh, in the left atrium via pulmonary veins uh, and then this left atrium pumps this oxygenated blood to the left ventricle through a left atrioventricular valve the left ventricle finally pumps this oxygenated blood to whole body uh, via aorta now let's move to the internal structures of the heart when we cut the paraconal interventricular groove then we see the interventricular septum which is in the form of a thick muscular structure uh, present between the right ventricle and left ventricle the other structure which we observe inside the heart is the right atrioventricular opening uh, which is the opening between right atrium and right ventricle and this opening is functionally opened and closed by the right atrioventricular valve this right atrioventricular valve is also known as tricuspid valve uh, and its name is tricuspid because it contains three cusps the names of these cusps are septal cusp and the septal cusp is that cusp of the tricuspid valve uh, which is just next to the interventricular septum of the heart the other two cusps that are present in the tricuspid valve are called angular cusp and parietal cusp these cusps are actually uh, fibrous structures uh, which guard the openings between the atrium and the ventricle so these tricuspid valves prevent the back flow of the blood from uh, from the uh, blood into the atrium so during the contraction of the right ventricle these valves prevent the back flow of the blood from the right ventricle into the atrium these tricuspid valves are attached to the papillary muscles of the heart valves uh, by fibrous cords which are called cordi tendini so these cordi tendini or fibrous cords are uh, are the means of attachment between the papillary muscles of the heart and tricuspid valves so this tricuspid valve is present between the right atrium and right ventricle similarly when the blood is pumped from the left atrium to the left ventricle uh, then the flow of blood is guarded by the left atrioventricular valve and this left atrioventricular valve is also known as bicuspid valve uh, its name is bicuspid because this valve has only two cusps and these cusps are septal cusp and parietal cusp like tricuspid valves uh, the cusps of the bicuspid valves uh, valve are also attached to the papillary muscles of the heart uh, through fibrous cords which are called cordae tendini now when the right ventricle pumps the blood uh, via pulmonary trunk to both lungs uh, then the flow of blood is guarded by the pulmonary valves which are present between the pulmonary trunk and right ventricle and these pulmonary valves are called semilunar valves which allow the blood to move from the ventricle to the trunk and prevent its flow from the uh, pulmonary trunk back into the ventricle so these semilunar valves prevent the back flow of the blood from the pulmonary trunk to the right ventricle 
three semilinear valvula combined to form semilinear valves or pulmonary valves uh, in order to guard the uh, flow of the blood through uh, right ventricle and pulmonary trunk the names of these semilunar valvula are uh, left semilunar valvula right semilunar valvula and intermediate semilunar valvula similarly on the left side uh, on the uh, when the blood pumps from the left left ventricle uh, to the aorta then its flow is also guarded by the same semilunar valves as are present in pulmonary trunk the difference between these two types of the semilunar valves is that the semilunar valves which are present in pulmonary trunk have lighter construction than those which are present in aorta it is because uh, much fo much force is needed by the heart uh, to pump the blood from uh, from left ventricle to the body uh, then to pump the blood from right ventricle to the lungs so in order uh, so in order to pump the blood to whole body uh, the left ventricle has to undergo strong contraction and therefore the uh, for this purpose the the construction of the semilunar valves of the aorta is heavier than that of the semilunar valves of pulmonary trunk at the base of aorta in in the base of the heart uh, there are two openings for left coronary artery and right coronary artery a special feature is present in the heart of the bovines and that feature is the skeleton of heart skeleton of heart is a uh, a connective tissue skeleton which separates the atria from the ventricles uh, and supplies the attachments for heart valves this skeleton of the heart is in the form of cartilage in all species uh, but in case of bovines it is more developed and it is in the form of two bones or, and these bones are called os cordis and each bone is present on uh, between the uh, atrium and ventricle or right atrium and uh, right ventricle and other bone is present between right uh, left atrium and left ventricle so these two bones are present uh, and these are called os cordis